Hey folks, Adam Dupay here, and today we're going to be looking at Ponables.kr, the passcode challenge. So looking at this challenge, we can see that it's 10 points, which is the most points we've seen so far. And we can, so the description says, mommy told me to make a passcode based login system. My initial C code was compiled without any error. Well, that's always good. Uh, well, there was some compiler warning, but who cares about compiler warnings? True that, who does care about compiler warnings? Actually, that's a joke. Compiler warnings are very serious. You should heed them as we will see here. And we can see that this flavor is, it's giving us uh, SSH access to a machine passcode at ponable.kr on port 2222. And that will tell us and take us where we wanna go. So uh, if we look here, uh, LD dash is not what we want. Uh, we can see LH dash LA. Again, we're in a situation where we have passcode.c, which we can read, we can execute passcode and passcode. Uh, interesting, they, they keep switching how they do these around, but I guess the end result is the same. So it's, uh, the owner is root, but the group is passcode underscore pwn, and the flag is readable by pass, group password code underscore pwn. And so we can see that this s means that the group set UID bit is set, uh, the set group SG, uh, the set group ID bit is set, which means that this passcode binary will execute as with the group privileges of passcode underscore pwn. And so this means we should be able to get our flag. All right, so what is this passcode? So let's passcode.c. Whoa, this is much bigger than any binary, any C code we've seen so far. Um, so let's kind of, I like to take kind of the broad overview strokes here and kind of look at like what are the high level functions and then start digging into what's actually here. So here we have three functions. We have a login function, a welcome function, and a main function. So let's start at main. We'll just walk through it. So main printf toddlers secure login system 1.0 beta. Uh, it's gonna call the function welcome, then call the function login and going to print out that, okay, now they can safely trust that we have the credentials. So um, presumably we've got to bypass this login system somehow. So let's look at welcome. Welcome, name, character buffer 100 on the stack, printf, enter your name, scanf, percent 100 s into name, and print out welcome space percent s your name. Okay, so the first thing we think about as we're reading this is going mentally note, okay, there's a scanf here. Um, remind me to look at the man page for scanf to see this percent %100s. What happens when, so even though I know it's gonna limit, so A, if you've never seen this, you need to understand what this means to scanf, but this 100s means it's gonna copy in 100 characters and only 100 characters. Now the question is, what happens if you enter in more than 100? What happens to the terminating null space? But uh, that's okay, so we have that there. And then we have the login method that gets called after welcome. So the login method is an int passcode one, int passcode two, and it's saying printf enter passcode one, scanf percent d into passcode one, then f flush standard in, and then a ha, a comment that says, ha, mommy told me that 32-bit is vulnerable to brute forcing. So enter the second cat passcode, uh, passcode two, so it gets passed in the scanf, and then printf checking, and then checks if passcode one is equal to 338150, and passcode two is equal to 1371337, then print out login okay, call system bin cat flag, otherwise print out login failed. And so now we would think that this would be a very easy thing to break, right? We'd think that, um, okay, this is simple. We just have to pass in passcode one as this value and passcode two as this value. Um, but let's keep that in mind and let's start executing this to see what it does. So uh, again, like I always say, we wanna run file on it to understand what it is. It's a set group ID elf 32-bit binary and we can run strings on it just to, you know, normally I don't necessarily think we need to do this if we have the C code, but hey, you know, always good to see uh, that it is what we think, percent %s, welcome, great. 
All right, so let's run this. So this should be, on first look, this should be incredibly easy to do, like super easy. Enter you name, uh, you name. Uh, so then it says enter passcode one, enter passcode two. And let's do this again. Hello, okay. And then, ah, 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 I know what happened. Okay, then let's do this. Passcode one should be that, 338150, and we get a segmentation fault. So what happened? This is when something that seems to be crazy happens that we should then go back and recheck our assumptions and say, okay, why did this actually happen? So going back to this code and looking at this code, if we relook at this scanf function, we have um, scanf percent %d, but we can see what we're passing in here. So normally the scanf function is going to read in, percent %d means read in something as an integer and write it to the address of whatever is passed in as the argument. But here, passcode one is not being passed in an argument. It's not a integer pointer, it's the actual integer. So the value of whatever is inside passcode one will be passed into this scanf function, which is crazy. I mean, this is, um, so this is a, a very interesting problem. So uh, that's what's gonna be written there. So what we wanna do is we wanna try to recreate this, um, this uh, fault in GDB. So enter your name, yellow, uh, passcode one, Maybe not that, let's do this one. And so we see we get dropped into the debugger and it's saying that uh, the thread passcode one stopped for reason sig sev. So there's a sig, uh, a seg fault, that's what's happening here. So we can see, we can look at the backtrace here. So this is what's the nice thing about uh, GEF is showing us this backtrace. We have main, we called login, which called underscore underscore ISOC 99 scanf, which called this method. And we can see we're in here, and the syntax here is we're moving EAX into wherever EDX points to. So if we look here in the registers, we see that EDX has the value F7, E7, 5C, AB, which, um, so we're trying to copy what's in EAX. So EAX is, this should be our value that we put in. So let's um, verify that. And yes, this 338150. So that's what we want to be in there. So we have 338150 in for this value. We're trying to copy it here, but why are we copying it here, right? This seems like it doesn't make sense. Like what is this F7E75CAB? So let's breakpoint on the login function and restart it. So yellow, and now we're at the login function. So actually, so we can see because we're using the, um, the symbols here, we didn't actually breakpoint at the very first uh, login method. So we have login zero, login one. So we have push EBP. So this is the uh, epilogue to the, uh, the um, prologue to the function to set up its current stack frame. Push EBP, move the stack pointer to the base pointer, subtract uh, 28 from the stack pointer. Um, so if we print out x uh, 20 wx uh, dollar sign ebp, um, so we can see some of the stack actually here. So we can see that there's things on the stack. Um, one thing we want to look at, let's pop over to hopper, which we haven't opened it up in. So now we want to read this executable. Uh, we want potable.kr, we want passcode, we want to give us passcode and start this analysis, good. So we will have main, we know we're in login. So we see, okay. So we have this printf, which first prints out what we want. Then we have the scanf, we have the format argument, which is not super interesting, uh, the argument to scanf. But what we do have is the next value to scanf. Um, so this is uh, what's going to be put on the stack. So what are we moving? We're moving EBP plus 10 here. 10 is negative 16. 
into edx and then moving that onto the stack. So it's going to be the second argument to scanf. Um, and let's see if the pseudocode. Yeah, so it's saying uh, var variable 10 with this parameter and it would look better. So we can do things in hopper like go here, tell it, hey, this is an, um, this is a string, this is a string, this is a string, this is a string. And then if we go back to our function and now it'll actually look a little prettier, but it'll say, hey, call scanf percent %d with variable 10, passing in variable 10. Um, so we can, so this EBP, so let's look at EBP. So we'll examine 20 white X, uh, EBP, dollar sign EBP minus 16. And we notice something interesting. So what's going on here? So the compiler has put and has stated when it compiles this, that passcode one is going to be at EBP minus 16 and passcode two is probably gonna be right above it at EBP minus 12. We'd have to look at this, where's the second scanf? We have variable, variable C, so EBP minus 12. So this means let's draw a nice stack. Uh, well, I don't know about nice stack, but hey, we'll draw a stack and you'll just have to deal with it. Um, so let's go here. So this is for our login function, this is EBP and we have at EBP minus 16. So this is minus 16 and, or sorry, minus, yeah, 16 and then minus 12, so four above that. So this is passcode one and this is passcode two, right? So what's happening here? Well, it's because when we look at this, code, it's using passcode one, the value that's there and passcode one from the C code has never been initialized. So what it's going to do, it's just going to move whatever's on the stack at that location of EBP minus 12. When this code executes, it's going to move that uh, onto the stack and it's going to write four bytes of whatever we put in there. Um, so we can see that actually this here, this F seven E seven five C A B, if we continue executing input something for passcode one, that's where we get a seg fault because we're trying to write to that memory location. So this is interesting, right? And so where did this come from, right? Well, we'd have to trace through the program and we know that as a program executes, the stack is gonna be used and reused as functions are called. So when we look back and we look back at this code and we see what happens, well, first main gets called and then printf gets called and then welcome gets called and huh, that's interesting. We actually can control a hundred bytes on the stack when welcome gets called uh, because all of this gets copied onto the stack. Then we have this uh, login function that gets called that then this passcode gets used. So uh, one of the first things let's do is let's look at the scanf system call, uh, sorry, not system call, the libc call. And let's look and see what does scanf do. So scanf, uh, specifically, we're looking for uh, when it, we have a percent with a number. Um, so s, let's see. So these are all the conversions. So percent s says, so this is important. We need to specifically understand the semantics here to know what input can we get into this function? So percent %s says matches a sequence of non white space characters. The next pointer must be a pointer to the initial element of a character array that is long enough to hold the input sequence, which is, uh, which is added to hold the input sequence and the terminating null byte, which is added automatically. The input string stops at white space or at the maximum field width, whichever occurs first. So the maximum field width is specified as part of the format. So the, so percent N, so N can be the maximum field width. So that's exactly what's happening here in our code is we have percent a hundred S so that should allow a hundred bytes to be written to name. So what we want to do now is just see what happens. What happens when we give an input that's a hundred characters? Uh, there's many ways to do this. I kind of like a, super simple way right off the bat is let's just print out 
Um, and I like A because my name starts with A. So we will print out 100 A's and we'll just use this as the name. So we'll go back here to GDB. We will restart. We will enter our name as this. Uh, we now are, remember we have a breakpoint at the login function. So now when we print out our EBP minus 16, we can see something super interesting. So now we can see at EBP minus 16, we control those four bytes. So the last four bytes that we write to this program, that's gonna be the four bytes here. So if we continue, we should put in some passcode and now we'll get the ED, EDX register is 61616161. Boom, so now we have a great starting where now we can uh, we can control the value that's inside this passcode one because the stack is being reused. And by reusing that, now we can overwrite anything that we want. So now we have a way to, by putting any uh, four, well, okay, so not exactly, but by putting four bytes at the end of our payload, because remember the buffer is going to write up. So the idea is when welcome gets called, um, it just so happens that when welcome gets called, so these are the same stacks. So let's say the name buffer is here somewhere. Um, name, that's a really bad name. Uh, 994 bytes are gonna be done and then another, another four bytes, the last four bytes, and then actually the closing zero because if we look very carefully back here, uh, if we restart that and enter in all those A's and we look at the stack, we actually zeroed out the thing that was right above us, which is pretty interesting. So, um, so we have all those A's and we wrote that zero byte. So now we completely control this passcode one parameter. Uh, that's going to be used as a pointer to overwrite with input of our choosing. So this is when welcome is called and this is when login was called. And because the stack is being reused, we can control the default parameter, uh, the default value that is inside the passcode one. Um, so now we have a way to overwrite, but what, so what memory addresses can we overwrite? So if we go back to our scanf, uh, let's go for S. Uh, S is super annoying. We'll just go down. We will look for S. Let's see. A sequence of non-white space characters. So this is a key element. So we can, we need to choose an address that does not have a white space character in it. So this is our first thing. Um, and so we have basically a primitive that will um, overwrite what we want. Um, so now we want to, uh, so we can control the address. We need to figure out what to write though. So where do we actually want to go? Um, what's our target? So let's look at the, going back to our C code, we actually see, Hey, there's actually something that does. So normally when we're trying to exploit a program, we want to somehow call system bin sh or dump to bash or do something like that. But we look here, there's actually a target here. If we can just print, jump to this, maybe printf login okay and this call of system, as long as we can jump here, then we're actually good, right? We don't even need to pass this check as long as we can somehow get the code to execute there. And if we look at login, we can see that there's uh, this call to system. And so we're moving this onto the stack and then calling system. So. And we'd want to quickly check 080485E3 off the top of my head. Um, oh, so this is the value that we want to overwrite. So let's make some scratch in our buffer. Uh, let us do, we are doing passcode. Um, so this is what we want to write. We want to somehow jump there. And because we're giving our input in terms of base 10, we wanna make sure we have this correct. Uh, so we wanna to jump to that address because that'll get us where we wanna go. So that's the input we want. And so we have what we wanna write, but where to overwrite. 
that is the current question. Where do we want to overwrite? So um, <coughs> this is when we want to then go ahead and look at, uh, let's go here, uh, read elf dash A. We want to look at all of the elf. So what is everything that's going on here? Um, so there's a couple different options. Uh, I'm gonna pass this through less. There's a couple different options of what we want to overwrite. So read elf is gonna read the elf header file and uh, tell us all the different sections in the binary and how these map onto the program's memory. Uh, so we can see we have a lot of uh, section headers. Um, something that's interesting that I actually haven't uh, done yet would be to play with the um, dot detours uh, try to write that address to the dot detours or to the dot finny. Um, another aspect would be to overwrite the uh, GOT, the global offset table, and that is this lovely relocation table here. Um, the idea is the dynamic linker uses the global offset table to because when a, so when a binary is dynamically linked, that means the dot so files of libc and other functions are not included in the binary so they need to be loaded at runtime well how do you link up something that's loaded at runtime you need to be able to put where that memory location is so you can jump to it so um and remember we can't have any white space characters or null bytes that's another um, thing so when we look at the global offset table we want to look at the code itself and say okay here is when we're going to overwrite something so what is a function that we can overwrite? Uh, well, one thing would maybe be printf. And we can look at this and look at printf. Uh, printf has a null byte in it, so that's probably not gonna fly. We can look maybe at scanf. So where's the scanf? Scanf here. Um, the problem here that maybe doesn't immediately jump out to you, and I actually tried this, it doesn't work, is this 20. So the problem is with this 20, uh, that is not going to work because 20 hex 20 is a space and so that's not going to work either but if we look at this lovely f flush which happens right after us uh, we can it is 0804 a004 and an important thing to note is it's a0 not 0a if it was 0a a new line this would not work that is a white space character but it's a0 and so the goal is let's overwrite 0a04 a004 and so how to do that well we need the output to this program oh I should have copied that uh, let's see I want a flush and actually if we look now from kind of a game theory gaming perspective uh, if we look about this code it's interesting right so there's a bunch of printf's bunch of scanf's but there's only one call to f flush um, so if we can see, yeah, so there's only one call to F flush in this entire source code. And this is really suspicious. It seems like this was almost put in here specifically to get us to do this, right? Um, so what do we want? Uh, Python dash C, so I want to print uh, A 94 times plus uh, slash X, 04 slash x a0 slash x04 slash x08 um, into let's say temp testing and then I want to run uh, passcode given temp testing and so I want to test this first so let's go here Let's create this file and then we'll rerun GDB with this input um, of what do I call it? Temp testing. So now we can go look at our thing and now we can see that we have 0804. Uh, we have a null byte here. That's interesting. So what happened? O four a zero. Let's see. O eight o four a zero zero four. Maybe it's ninety three. Let's see. Now 
let's print out this value. Hmm. Let's look at the stack. 61, 61, 61, 61, 04, A0. Okay, all the bytes are getting in there. 04, A0, 04, 08. Let's try different values. 16. Oh, duh, it should be 96. I don't know why I started with 94. <laughs> All right, that makes more sense. This is why you always want to debug it locally so you can test to see if things are working. So now we can see 0804A004. That means we should be overwriting. And now when it asks us what we want as input, we'll give this and continue. Ah, so it said login failed. So it says enter passcode one, enter passcode two. And remember, this makes sense uh, because it's we're putting in our name, but then we also need to input passcode one in the same standard input. So we actually need this as part of our exploit. Um, so here we have a new line, then we have this new line, and then uh, we shouldn't have anything for passcode two, so that should be fine, but we'll put one in anyways and see what happens. Uh, okay, let's change this to 96. This is the super interesting thing and the thing that gets me really excited about security is you need to have everything be very, very, very precise or it's not gonna work. The address is correct. Let's continue. Boom, there we go. Uh, process is executing a new program, bin dash. Remember this is local, it's executing cat. There's no cat file there. Uh, so we should be able to actually just take this um, exploit, let's run this here. And let that run to generate us a temporary file. I think this should work. And then we will run it. And assuming our environments are the same, I mean, not exactly the same, but assuming our exploit does not depend on the specific output of the environment or any ASLR type things, this should work. And it doesn't, and that's one of the great things about why you wanna change the global offset table uh, because it does not move when the program executes. Those are fixed addresses. There we go, and it says, uh, enter your name, welcome, all those A's. Sorry, mom, I got confused about scanf usage. Oh, now we have a frowny face instead of a smiley face. That's lame. Uh, but now if we authenticate, I'm sure it's going to tell me I am not logged in. But that's okay. And here we are, and we have found the flag. So this was a super interesting, I really like this challenge because it looks on first glance, when you look at this C code, you're like, ah, nothing's wrong. Maybe there's a problem with the scanf. And what you realize is it's one character, right? It's the fact that there's no address of operator in this passcode one that makes this program vulnerable. And that is super interesting. And not only that, if you couldn't necessarily control the stack, you may not be able to get something useful in this passcode one value uh, in that space. So what you overwrite, uh, you either may not be able to control or you may not be able to alter. So. Um, that, I think, is something that is super interesting, and I really, really enjoyed this challenge. So I hope you like this walkthrough, and I'll see you folks later.